Armando Hasrigan, Biology and Medicine videos. Please make sure to subscribe, join the forum and group for the latest videos. Please visit Facebook Armando Hasrigan. In this video, we're going to look at Ebola virus. Ebola virus causes uh, Ebola virus disease, formerly known as Ebola hemorrhagic fever. And this is a very dangerous and often fatal disease in humans. The Ebola virus is a member of the Filoverde family a family known to cause viral hemorrhagic fever, which is a type of fever that causes shock and even death with severe bleeding. If we look at the Ebola structure, it has a cell membrane and it has nuclear proteins inside itself and an outer glycoprotein. The genetic material, which is RNA, is within the nuclear protein. It, Ebola also has an enzyme called polymerase, which helps in its uh, replication. Other important structures that we must note include VP40 and VP30, which, are, which essentially help in viral replication. Now let's learn a bit more about how the Ebola virus is transmitted to humans. The transmission of the Ebola virus to humans happens through infected animals, such as fruit bats. Fruit bats carry the Ebola virus. And then, the Ebola virus can be introduced to humans through close contact with the fruit bat's blood, secretions, or other bodily fluids. So let's see how the Ebola virus first infects this animal, the fruit bat. So here I'm drawing a cell of a fruit bat, and the goal of the Ebola virus is to replicate within the fruit bat cell, causing an infection. The Ebola virus here, as I mentioned, contains an outer glycoprotein. Now, the bat cell can recognize this glycoprotein and will think that it's normal. And so this is a way the Ebola virus can enter the fruit bat cell. Once the Ebola virus enters the cell, the Ebola virus will release all its content, the genetic material, the nuclear proteins, and the polymerase. So what happens essentially is that the genetic material will be replicated and as well the genetic material will undergo a few processes called transcription and translation which will create other structures that the virus requires. To put it into very simple terms the Ebola virus is basically hijacks the cell and replicates within it and once it replicates all its content and all its genetic material, it will all be packaged up again to create multiple Ebola viruses. So here we have multiple Ebola viruses. So you can imagine the Ebola virus just keeps replicating within the fruit bat. The fruit bat's internal body is an optimal environment for Ebola virus replication. The now infected fruit bat can then transmit the Ebola virus to a susceptible human. The Ebola can then spread in the community through human-to-human -human transmission, with the infection resulting from direct contact from blood or other bodily fluids. Family and friends of the infected individual are usually the most susceptible because they're, they're the ones in most contact with the person. Mortality rates of Ebola infection are about 50 to 90 percent, so it's very fatal. So let's have a quick look at how the Ebola virus can replicate or can infect a human. So here we're looking at an immune cell. An immune cell is important because immune cells uh, help defend against viruses, infections, and other foreign bodies. The Ebola virus can be eaten up by the immune cells. However, Within the immune cell, the Ebola virus can somehow replicate. The immune cell is now infected, and as a result, the immune cell will secrete inflammatory molecules. Inflammatory molecules will cause an inflammatory process. The multiple Ebola viruses can then infect other cells and can bind onto also glycoprotein receptors enter the cell and replicate, similar to the replication process within fruit bats. 
So this process will keep continuing. The Ebola virus will replicate within all these cells, creating more Ebola virus. And this is how the signs and symptoms of Ebola virus disease uh, occurs. The signs and symptoms of Ebola virus disease include fever, inflammation, headache, and sore throat. Other progressive signs and symptoms include vomiting, diarrhea, rash, impaired kidney, and impaired liver function. The inflammatory molecules which are released by the immune cells, as well as other cells within the human body, can cause damage to vascular integrity. And this will lead to the hemorrhagic fever as we know it. But hemorrhagic fever does not occur in all Ebola virus cases. The incubation period, that is the time interval from infection with the virus to when the symptoms occur, is between 2 to 21 days. When you diagnose Ebola virus disease, it is important to rule out other similar diseases, including malaria. To diagnose Ebola virus disease, you can use uh, methods such as ELISA, antigen recognition test, as well as PCR essay. Prevention is and will always be the most important aspects when dealing with infections. Unfortunately, there is no vaccine against Ebola, or rather, there is no licensed vaccine for, vir for Ebola viruses. Currently, isolation of infected persons, wearing protective clothing, and using infection control measures are the most important things in reducing the spread of Ebola virus disease. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed this video.